and say it. I love young adult novels. <laughs> and in my book, the cheesier the better. The predictable plot lines, the ridiculous tropes, and of course, the quirky yet lovable protagonists may seem cringeworthy to some. But to me, they provide a sense of refuge throughout my teenage years. After all, when your generation is faced with a dizzying array of societal challenges and tasks with implementing solutions, this seemingly inescapable reality can feel exhausting. And that is my concern today. In a 2019 study conducted by the YMCA, three in five young Americans reported that certain social issues just feel like lost causes. This epidemic in youth activism fatigue has far-reaching consequences, proving counterproductive to larger social movements and detrimental to individual mental health. So we'll start today's discussion by flipping to page one and discussing the root causes of burnout before exploring its implications and finding some ways to combat it and change our attitudes towards it, which seems like a happy ending that can benefit all of us. So let's start with a quick crash course in burnout itself namely what it is and a non-exhaustive list of its causes. One comparison I like to use is the teapot analogy. You start out on the flame, water continuously boiling, or in other words, you're intrinsically motivated and you're eager to keep going. But as time goes on and more and more water converts from its liquid to its gaseous state, you're left with less and less for yourself. You become a dry teapot crackling over the flame or urged by external factors to keep going, but you're in a state of motivational paralysis. Similarly, many young people whose advocacy is tied to factors like race or gender, their advocacy becomes inextricably intertwined with their sense of self, their identities. When the political becomes personal, as explained by Michaela Tillery at Stanford University, oppression and barriers become such a pervasive stressor in every aspect of life. When efforts prove challenging or they don't yield immediate results, this sense of systemic frustration can manifest in exhaustion, not just surrounding activism itself, but professionally, academically, and even personally. Youth activist burnout can be caused by the sentiments we've heard from our older counterparts that our generation will be the one to change the world. In fact, 67% of Americans today believe that Generation Z is more likely to speak out and take action regarding the causes that we collectively support. Some cite the pressure that people our age face to eradicate climate change once and for all, or magically close the gender pay gap all by ourselves. But over time, this can feel overwhelming and quite frankly, exhausting. So when youth activists do burn out or decide to just take a step back from their work, they're often met with criticism from their peers for prioritizing individual level needs over larger systemic issues. However, this misconception promotes something known as the activist culture of martyrdom. The idea that youth activists should work towards their limits, past their limits even, in the name of achieving social change. If we don't reach our activist capacity, we're made to feel inferior, like we're not doing enough for the causes that we claim to support. Soon enough, we begin to feel robbed of all generational hope, growing cynical about our own efforts and the futures we believe our generation will inevitably face. Not only do these sentiments catalyze youth activist burnout in the first place, but they're what reinforce this unhealthy association between progress and exhaustion. However, I do want to recognize that taking a break from activism can be a privilege when, for so many, who are constantly reminded of the oppression and barriers they face truly really have no escape. But when we police one another's apparent dedication our own causes by trivializing their need to recharge, we don't advance our own advocacy in the process. In fact, this culture of competition and toxicity among young change makers, one that 
fosters division rather than sowing unity, ultimately keeps all of us farther from achieving our collective goals. So what can we do to recognize and support our peers dealing with activist burnout? Well, for one thing, we need to identify which causes and which tasks are most crucial to our and our movement's success. One tool I like to use was introduced to me by educational advocate and my name twin, Zoe James, and it's called the Eisenhower Matrix. The Eisenhower Matrix gets its name from President Dwight Eisenhower, who is believed to have said, I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important. And that's exactly what the Eisenhower Matrix is all about. Quadrant one houses all the tasks that are both urgent and important, like prepping for that meeting you have tomorrow, which should be at the very top of your to-do list. Next, quadrant two holds any tasks that are important, but not as pressing, like prepping for a big TEDx talk a couple weeks in advance. Quadrant two holds a little more space for creativity and autonomy in your time management. Quadrant three, however, holds tasks that are urgent, but may not seem as important, like filling out emails or clearing out your inbox, which can be done, but maybe with some help or support from others. Now, my personal favorite is quadrant four, anything that is neither urgent nor important, like scrolling on social media when you really, really should be asleep by now. <laughs> These can be deleted to maximize efficiency and well-being. Now, by no means is this a burnout panacea, but having a visual representation of what should get done when can make life as an activist, a student, an employee, and a human being a whole lot easier. Next, it's time to recognize that meaningful change takes time. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted over a year, and the 19th Amendment, allowing women the right to vote, was introduced in every single session of Congress for over 42 years, voted down each time, until finally it was passed in 1919. Although we young activists may not have as many years of change-making experience under our belts as our older counterparts, it's important to remember the often lengthy span of time it takes before tangible results can be observed. After all, no value of societal change is immediate. It can take hours, days, months, years, and in some cases, even decades. That doesn't mean we have to wait that long to change our attitudes. A big part of eradicating the stigma surrounding burnout involves dismissing the fears of unproductivity that accompany it. In fact, studies show that routinely pausing to relax and reflect on your work, make the time that you do dedicate to it, all the more successful and personally fulfilling. Plus, when we step in as our peers step back, we'll be showing inclusivity and empathy, fostering a culture of solidarity among youth activists for decades to come. Now, I may not live in the fictional world of my beloved young adult novels, where the biggest problems people my age have to face revolve around makeovers and love trends. But I'm excited to see Generation Z author its own story. If we can overcome youth activist burnout, or at least alter our attitudes towards it, we'll be one page closer to a story arc that honors our values and puts our beliefs into practice. Thank you.